Hi and welcome back to the next video in the physics lessons series. We're going to talk about the parallel circuit. In the last video we talked about the series circuit and we had three resistors or light bulbs in series with the battery but today we're going to take those same three light bulbs and we're going to put them in parallel to each other with the battery. Alright let's get started. Before we can get started solving a parallel circuit problem, we first have to have our reference table ready and we're going to be back on the electricity page. We're going to use all the same formulas that we did in the last problem for Ohm's law, uh, but we're not going to use the series circuits. Now we're going to use the parallel circuits. So we have a doodle right here and I'm going to explain how this all works. The steps in solving a parallel circuit problem are very similar to the steps in the series circuit problem. As a matter of fact, the only step that's different is step three. Now let's explain. Well, we might be using a different formula for step one. We still have to find its equivalent resistance in the circuit. We still have to find the total current in the circuit. But unlike the series circuit, when there was only one path, now there are three paths, say, in this particular example, and we don't have the same amount of current going through each one. So we have to determine what that is. And then, of course, we still have to find the power dissipation in each of the branches of the circuit. So let's describe what's happening. Let's look at the circuit in live action. So here I have a circuit called a parallel circuit, and the reason why it's called parallel is because there are branches that break off from a main node. So let's take a look at the flow of electrons and see. We have the battery. I made it 12 volts this time and it's pushing the charges through the wire and it gets to a junction. This gets to a junction. Now we did not have a junction in the last type of circuit. Series circuits has no junction. It's just one closed loop. But a parallel circuit has a junction. So when the electrons meet this junction, they are free to flow in the first branch, the second branch, and the third branch. And then they come back together again. They meet back in this junction, at the other side, and they flow back into the battery. Now, the rate at which each branch can allow charge to flow depends on the resistance. So here we have 2 ohms, 4 ohms, and 8 ohms. Now 2 ohms is much less resistance than 4 and 8. And you could see by the animation that the electrons are going much more quickly through the lower resistance branch, a little slower through the higher resistance branch, and slowest through the highest resistance branch. You can also see the light bulbs are brighter when there's more current or less resistance flowing. And we're going to discuss the amount of current that gets through in each branch. You could see that there are slower electrons and less brightness in this bulb. That would equate to the wattage. And of course, the last branch here has the highest resistance, the slowest electrons, and the dimmest bulb or the lowest wattage. The first step in calculating a parallel circuit usually is to add the resistances. However, we don't add them directly because we have a rule, as seen on the reference table, that the inverse of the equivalent resistance is equal to the inverse of the first plus the inverse of the second plus the inverse of the third. This is actually derived from the E5 formula for resistance, where you have a fraction, V over I. Uh, unfortunately, we're not going to derive that expression for you right now, but we're going to use it only. So you're just going to have to take us on faith that the inverse resistance formula is the one that we're going to be using. So here's a quick trick for using your TI-84 plus calculator to calculate the equivalent resistance using the inverse formula. I see kids using lots of strange input methods with 1 divided by etc etc. 
it's always going to give you uh, the potential of having a keystroke error. So let's take a look at what I have here. Whatever numbers you do have, you have three resistors, four, ten, two, you just do this. You put a parenthesis, you type in the resistor number, like say the value is four, and you hit the inverse button. Then you hit add, the next resistor, hit the inverse button, add, the next resistor, hit the inverse button, close your parentheses, and hit the inverse button one more time, and whatever answer you get is guaranteed to be accurate. So there are other methods of doing this that are much more complicated, but I don't advise them. So the first step is really easily very calculated. The equivalent resistance of this circuit, this circuit right here, is... 1.14 ohms all right now let's look at step two step two is identical to step two of the other kind of circuit the series circuit you have to just find the total current so you take the voltage and you divide it by the resistance that you found in the step one and here we have um, the original voltage 12 volts divided by the 1.14 and we have 10.5 amps. That's a lot of amps. Um, when you put resistors or light bulbs in parallel, since you have more paths for flow, you can get a lot more current through than you could ordinarily. All right, let's take a look at the next step of this problem. The next step of this problem is to find the current splits, meaning how much current splits into each branch depending on the resistance of each light bulb. Now, in the last problem, the series circuit, step three was to find the voltage drops. But since all of these branches are connected to the same endpoints, you'll see right here that they will actually have the same voltage drop. So there's 12 volts across the whole group. If I analyzed branch one, 12 volts. If I analyzed branch 2, 12 volts. If I analyzed branch 3, it's still 12 volts. And that is consistent with what this formula tells us. That the voltage drop or the push is the same down each branch. Alright? So if the push down each branch is the same, the amount of current that flows down each branch, I1, I stands for current, I2, I3, that's current 1, current 2, and current 3, they have to add back up to be the total current flowing into the branch, into the node, through each of the branches, back together again, and back to the other side of the battery. Let's do the calculations now. To find the current splits, we have to use Ohm's Law in the form solve for I with V over R. And which R do we use? Well, we know that there are three branches and each branch has its own resistance. Since the voltage drop or the potential difference across each of the branches is the same, the V remains the same. We're going to divide the 12 volts by each one of these resistances. And here's what it's going to look like. Okay, let's take a look now at the calculations for the current splits. Using Ohm's law, V divided by R, we're going to take the 12 volts divided by the first resistance of 2 ohms. We get 6 amps. Then the 12 volts divided by 4 ohms. And we get 3 amps. And the same 12 volts divided by 8 ohms. And we only get 1.5 amps. Now let's take a look on the live simulation and see what the current readings in each branch work out to be with the meter. So we can take the voltage meter and we can put it at the junction of all branches and you'll see that there are 12 volts between these two points. And this 2 ohm resistor or light bulb is only is allowing six amps to flow through it's a very low resistance this four ohm 
light bulb, which is more resistance, lets a bit less current flow through. And of course, this is the least amount of current, only 1.5 amps is flowing through because it's a much higher resistance. If you add up all of the current splits from branches 1, 2, and 3, 6 amps plus 3 amps plus 1.5 amps, you get a total of 10.5 amps, which is the same answer you got in step 2. So again, this is a self-checking problem. Let's take a look at the next step of the problem. All right, here is step 4, the power dissipation. So the total power is the total current times the total voltage, which gave us 126 watts. Now in each branch, we use the branch current times that total voltage, and you can see 6 times 12 volts, 72 watts. 3 times 12 volts, 36 watts. And 1.5 amps times 12 volts gave you 18 watts. And if you added these three back up together again, it's still 126 watts. This is another self-checking problem. Let's summarize the steps to solving the parallel circuit. The first thing we do is find the equivalent resistance by using the inverse resistance formula, which is on the reference table, and it is listed right here. The second step is to find the total current using Ohm's law, which is equation E5. The third step is to find the current distribution or splits in each branch and when you add them back up you should get the total that you started with. And finally the fourth step is to find the power dissipation or the wattage of each branch. Thank you for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one.